good morning everyone yeah so uh, i would like to welcome you all for this session on uh, leveraging gateway api for kubernetes native api management uh, my name is sanjeev mahagode i work as a product manager for ws api manager product uh, it's a api management solution which comes with the gateway and the full life cycle api management platform uh, so uh, i start my career as a load balance engineer and then uh, move to api management integration uh, so my experience is pretty much aligned with uh, integration, API management, uh, load balancing, API gateways, and that area. So recently, I work on this project uh, where we implement Kubernetes native API management solution. And uh, while working on that, uh, I got opportunity to work very closely with uh, Gateway API for uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so because uh, when we implement this solution, we wanted to have a core specification. Then uh, we thought of using uh, Gateway API. And uh, for last two years, uh, we used that and we did multiple releases. Uh, today in this session, what I'll be doing is I'll share my own experience about uh, Gateway API and how we use that and uh, some of the learnings and lessons learned uh, while using that. So today agenda, uh, I will basically, I mean, st I'll start with the very basic. So I'll start from the ingress and usages of ingress. And then I'll uh, explain uh, why we wanted to have something like uh, gateway API and some limitations of the uh, ingress specification. So then I'll discuss the relationship between uh, gateway API and API management. And then eventually I'll try to come up with the reference architecture for uh, doing API management in Kubernetes environment. So I'll start with the accessing uh, services in Kubernetes. I think uh, all of you all are know, but just to completeness, I will go through that. So when you deploy your workload or your application servers on Kubernetes, they will deploy on uh, application pods. Uh, so when you want to expose this to another party, uh, we need to have some network stable endpoint because pods can uh, go anytime and come anytime. Uh, so due to that fact, uh, we invoke this through a service entity. So that's the entity that we use to invoke services or web, web services uh, without depending on the ports. So that is how we do in the, uh, within a cluster. So when you want to expose the same web service to outside, there are again multiple ways that you can do that. So first approach is node port, where you open a specific port to outside and through that you get traffic. So then you can use load balancer. Uh, you get load balancer from the infrastructure provider and link that to your service. And also use the, you can use Ingress, which is the most famous and uh, most widely adapted uh, implementation. So when you use Ingress, uh, you get some capabilities like load balancing, SSL termination, and it's having native support for HTTP traffic handling. So all these supports are there. So what I believe is, uh, as of today, Ingress specification is the most famous one and uh, used across industry. So if I explain further how we use Ingress is, uh, let's say in this particular example, I have three different services, search service, order service, and the payment service, and there are different application ports are there. So in my Ingress level, I can configure a different uh, URL path to go to different services. So it's a very basic usage of Ingress. I I'm pretty sure you all are used uh, Ingress uh, in your day-to-day -day operations. So then if you look at sample Ingress configuration, it will be something like this. Uh, you basically provide the kind Ingress. So then you add different rules, and then you define uh, your paths and actual services that we need to uh, route request. So if you look at this configuration, it's a one flat file where we have like a server level configuration as well as route details. So let's say every time we need to add a new different service, new different route, you will have to modify this configuration and deploy. So then I'll discuss uh, why we need to have uh, some more uh, additional features in the Ingress, like some of the challenges we faced when we try to use Ingress. So I'll start with the uh, security related issues. So when you expose your service to outside, like especially web services when you expose to outside, uh, you need to have different security. So most of the time you need uh, OAuth 2 security, uh, then fine grain access control, uh, and uh, MTLS, so these kind of security requirements are there. So if you look at the plain Ingress specification, uh, 
these uh, support related to security are somewhat limited. So that is one limitation we see with the ingress specification. So then when it comes to uh, SSL termination, it can do SSL termination. But if you look at uh, fine grain access control or the policy enforcement on top of MT SSL, uh, that support is somewhat limited. So then, like I said earlier, if you look at the previous configuration, so this one, so it's just a one flat file where you have a server configuration as well as the route configuration. So that is again kind of a limitation because uh, let's say in a production scenario, you need to have access to this configuration. So what if we have proper, proper fine grain access where one admin level person or cluster, provision, uh, cluster provider can uh, do server level configuration whereas application developers can there do their own route configuration and add them separately. So that kind of flexibility is uh, somewhat missing. So that also goes to uh, some security concerns. So then I'll discuss about some of the routing limitations we noticed. So one, one option is it's primarily focused on HTTP and HTTPS. But if you look at the modern application architecture, sometimes you may need uh, other protocols. Because of the application architecture, sometimes we, we have to use uh, gRPC, TCP, WebSocket, likewise different protocols. So ingress is primarily focused on the HTTP, so that is also one we, we see as a one limitation related to routing part. So then when it comes to uh, path or host routing, uh, ingress can do basic routing, but when it comes to some complicated scenarios, uh, like uh, headers, cookie, cookie combination, uh, we cannot straight away define those things. So then again, uh, if you look at the microservices architecture, it's very important to have uh, traffic splitting, retries, uh, canary deployment models, uh, so that kind of deployment options as well. So then again, uh, if you look at the support available in the ingress related to these uh, advanced traffic management, it is also somewhat limited. So these are some of the routing and security related limitations we observed. So due to these limitations, different vendors came up with their own vendor annotations. Uh, it it worked up to some extent, but when you try to uh, use this vendor extension and try to move from one vendor to another, again, there can be uh, usability issues. And when you want to do uh, some kind of a configuration change or some kind of a extension, uh, again, uh, you, need, you always need to have some kind of a workaround. So that is also a limitation. So then the previous uh, explanation I provide related to configuration can lead to usability issues as well because uh, let's say uh, if when we don't have that separation it's always somewhat hard for us to push a configuration to uh, server without impacting other work okay so due to these limitations uh, Kubernetes gateway API introduced so it is uh, mainly introduced to uh, like the mitigate those limitations and it is again community driven approach. I mean, it's uh, completely started by the Kubernetes community. And it started uh, 2019 by the SIG network community. And their goal was to develop comprehensive uh, and adaptable routing solution for uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster routing configuration. So that is their main goal. So I was fan of this project from the very beginning. And uh, in, in 2022, uh, when we wanted to implement API Gateway project, uh, we straight away went ahead and uh, started using this one because we were following their work so I mean for some time and it's a complete platform which support all the routing capabilities we need for API management solution. So then uh, I will discuss a bit about their resource model because uh, before using gateway API specification it is very important to understand their resource model. So in their resource model, uh, they have different personas, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, first level is the infrastructure provider. So infrastructure providers are the ones who can determine what kind of gateways, gateway implementations available in my infrastructure. So for example, they will just define a few allowed gateway types in their infrastructure. So then comes the cluster operators. So these are the people who actually instantiate and run the cloud. So they will basically refer to one of the gateway classes already defined and instantiate that with the specific port, uh, security protocols, schemes, and that kind of detail. So they are the ones who actually instantiate that environment. So then as application developers, I can write route to my service. So basically as application developer, I will develop my web service 
and deploy into my Kubernetes cluster. Then when I want to expose that to outside, I will write something entity called route and link that to existing gateway. So that way I can expose my service to outside. So with this uh, level of separation, as you can see, application developers do not need to uh, touch or change gateway configuration. So for example, they don't have to mess up with the ports and other configurations. They can simply write the route and link it to already running gateway. So that is very convenient and uh, uh, scalable when we go for like large deployment where we have like, multiple teams collaborate with each other. So then uh, let's look at few sample configuration. So if we consider the gateway class, uh, configuration will be something like this. So infrastructure providers will say, okay, these are the allowed uh, gateway classes. So then uh, cluster operators instantiate gateway with this kind of configuration. They will provide port, uh, what kind of protocol we're gonna use, allowed resources, and they instantiate gateway. So in this case, uh, I can give a name, it's my gateway, and then gateway is instantiate. So now comes the application developers. So these are the people who write services like I mentioned earlier. So if I take the first example, uh, I, I, I need to expose my, uh, my service one, which is running on port 8080, uh, with the slash bar resource. So in that case, I don't have to configure the gateway. So I'll just refer to gateway by adding parent reference to already created gateway and deploy my route. So similar to HTTP route, there are like uh, gRPC route, uh, TCP route, multiple route options are available. So that way, uh, I can expose my service to outside. So it's a very basic usage of uh, gateway API. There are different capabilities, but it's a very basically how we can use it uh, for day-to-day uh, -day operations. So then I'll uh, discuss few examples. Uh, so first one is, uh, security related use case, where we have a secure call and non-secure call. If it is a secure call, we can call to external load service and uh, get the credential validated. And if we get the proper response, we can send it to secure service. Uh, so that is available in the configuration. So the, through the configuration, you can configure that. So then uh, the second one in the right side, you see uh, traffic is split in scenario where we want to route 95% of the traffic to one uh, product service and 5% to another service. So every time when you release new update, when you release new version of your services, you can use this approach to uh, roll out releases. So then the third approach uh, is where we can use different attribute to uh, determine uh, which service we need to invoke. So it include uh, HTTP method, uh, query params, path params, you can use any, uh, any configuration like that. Okay, so then, uh, so far what we discussed was uh, how we can use ingress, uh, some of the limitations we see in the ingress, and the basic understand about gateway API. So now let's discuss how gateway API and API management are related with each other. So, uh, so if you look at the gateway API, it's mainly discussing about your cluster's main traffic entry point and how we can configure out to that. And if you look at the API management, API management is also about uh, enabling quality of services for your web services. Basically, if you look at the API gateway part, what it does is applying quality of services for incoming traffic. Then if you look at closely, these two goals are somewhat aligned. So what that means is both of these are discussing about uh, main traffic access point for your cluster. So due to that fact, uh, Recently, API management vendors also expressed their interest about Gateway API and try to adhere to that. And uh, as a result of that, last two years, most of the API management vendors started doing some kind of implementation related to uh, Gateway API. Uh, so our project is also somewhat related to that, and that is the fact, uh, that is the reason we want to uh, invest on Gateway API. Uh, but when we do so, we have to remember one thing. Uh, gateway API is discussing about routing part, but if you look at the API gateway requirement, uh, it's somewhat broader. So as API gateway, we should be responsible for authentication, authorization, uh, rate limiting, uh, subscription management, monetization. So it's a kind of a broader scope uh, compared to gateway API. Uh, it's not just the routing part, so that is one important thing we need to note. 
So then uh, let's try to uh, understand how we can effectively use the Gateway API and uh, Kubernetes features as well as some of the API management requirements and try to come up with API management solution which is natively designed for Kubernetes environment. So I will discuss few point and uh, I, I try to come up with the requirement set to design API management solution for Kubernetes. So first point I noted here is the CRD or the declarative approach that we all are using when we use Kubernetes. So we, we used to do the declarative configuration for all, all the artifacts we deployed in the Kubernetes. So when you do API management, it is important to represent your API management related artifacts also in a declarative fashion, which is uh, not uh, supported by almost all the API management framework frameworks available today. So that is one requirement. So then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, API Gateway and Gateway API are two, two things. So as an API management solution, you need to have some additional capabilities. So you have to do proper assessment on these requirements when you start something. Because uh, let's say you start with the uh, some solution which support Gateway API or the routing part, and later, if you realize, okay, I need rate limiting, I need monetization, I need uh, logging and tracing, business analytics. So at that point, it will be too late for you to uh, select the right solution. So that's why I'm saying, uh, when we start solution, we have to think about these things and select the right gateways because there are like 100 different gateways out there, API gateways out there. So you have to do proper analysis on your requirement and then choose the right gateway. So then I will discuss a bit about control plane as well. So now we have a gateway. Now we need some entity to control this API gateway. That is where the control plane comes into play. Uh, with that, you can do uh, API uh, control part, governance, management aspect, deployments. So all these things you should be able to uh, control with the control plane. So that is one angle of the control plane. There's other angle too. So when it comes to consumption side, most of the time we need to expose some sort of portal to outside users. Because when you want to expose your service or data to outside as APIs, you should have some mechanism for them to engage with. To do that, we need to have an API portal. So when it comes to API portal, there are again some requirement comes in. So for example, it should be, uh, I mean API should be discoverable and there should be testing tools available. SDK should be available. So all these capabilities are available and through that, you can increase the developer productivity. Because as an organization, you need to expose your service to outside in the most uh, easiest way to consume. So that enabled by API developer portal. So you need to focus on that angle as well. <coughs> so then uh, JITOPS, I think in previous sessions also JITOPS is somewhat discussed. So when we have CRDs in a declarative fashion, uh, we need to have version control, revision control. So all these things need to be in place. So JITOP support is also uh, related and it is something we need to support in uh, this kind of platform. So then uh, observability and business analytics crucial for any platform. It's not just for the API management, any, any product, any solution, it is very important. But in the API case, APIs are what represent your organization to outside. That is the main entry point for your data uh, as an organization. So if you do not have proper observability or analytics solution in place, you, you lose track of like how people consume your service, how people use your data. So that part is missing. So for example, as an organization, you may need to know uh, who are accessing my APIs. What are my top 10 APIs for today? How my consumers are distributed globally? So to understand that part, it is very important to have a uh, proper observability and analytics solution. So, so these are some of the requirement, like a very high level requirement we see uh, when we do API management in Kubernetes. So then let's try to uh, come up with some kind of uh, uh, reference architecture for doing API management in Kubernetes, uh, considering these things we discussed so far. So as you can see here, this is the basic way that you expose your service or web services to outside world. So you have your ingress, you have your web applications and web services, and uh, through the consume apps, you consume these web uh, services. So in the ingress level, you do some kind of authentication, uh, basic rate limiting, access management as well. So then to add API management, uh, like we discussed before, we can add API gateway, 
uh, to do the control part, we can add the control plane. So then we can add the tracing and analytic solution. Then uh, when we have API management solution in place, we have this persona called API developer, an API product manager. So they will do the API creation, development, and management part. Possibly they will need uh, developer tooling as well. So then once they configure, uh, or once they create APIs and API related artifact, like we discussed earlier, we can represent them in a declarative fashion as APIs, application subscriptions. So we can deploy them through the CRDs. Uh, through that, we can configure Kubernetes server. And uh, within the cluster also, sometimes we may need to store this information, which we can, uh, where we can use uh, ETCD or some kind of a meta store within the Kubernetes cluster. And through that, uh, we can configure API gateway. So once you configure the gateway, it can apply all the quality of services that we discussed so far. Uh, that includes authentication, authorization, rate limiting, subscription, uh, monetization, and other quality of services which require for API management. OK, so uh, I'm not going to uh, discuss about selecting gateway or analytics platform or the control plane. That is up to you. I mean, you can do that by evaluating different criteria and your organization requirement. But the, if you look at the high level, uh, this is what we need for uh, doing basic API management on top of Kubernetes. I mean, if you look at the gateway, there are like 100 different API gateway solutions out there. You can pick one of them. Then analytics and tracing, it's same. Uh, based on your specific requirement, uh, you can choose one and uh, do the implementation. OK, so that is what I want to discuss today. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer them or else I'll be around, uh, I'm happy to discuss about ending related to API management and the project, project what we did. Any questions? So. So before adapting gateway API, we were mainly uh, evaluating ingress specification. So we try to adapt the ingress specification. Uh, so if you are doing the very basic routing part, we can use that at, per my experience. But when you go to like the modern uh, requirement, like we discussed, uh, traffic splitting, uh, security related stuff, sometimes we cannot represent that. So that is why we thought of going ahead with uh, gateway API specification and adapt that. Yeah, that is our experience. Sure. If I use gateway API and I want to use integration and make is that then again all the effects do I still have some kind of specific role again? Sorry, I didn't get that. If I want to use gateway API and have a small set of abstractions, but if I want to go for rate limiting or communication, those I need then again then that specific set? Yes, I will come to Yes. That is why I said uh, when you use the gateway API, that support mainly the routing angle. But if you look at the uh, like the API gateway, there are different uh, quality of services, like the rate limiting security and stuff like that. So if you're using that as application firewall or something like that, like basically ex expose the web traffic, there are certain things that you do. So my suggestion is like uh, if you consider the routing part, gateway API is comprehensive and it, it completes everything. But when you try to go for these different areas, like the application gateway, API gateway, there are certain cases where you need, obviously, uh, implement within that domain. So for that, yes, we need a specific solution for that one. Correct. OK, then I'll wrap up session. So if you want to discuss anything, I'll be around. Let's have a chat. Thank you so much.